What's an investor to do? Where is their safe harbor from this storm? So look, I think it's a question of what your time horizon is. And if you're concerned about volatility in markets in the near term and want to add some more defense to the portfolio, I think the clear choice at this point is health care. Um, mm. If you look at other defensive sectors, staples and utilities, you're basically at peak valuation relative to the broad market. Um, we also think there's significant earnings risk for consumer staples as the consumer weakens, pricing power wanes for some of these companies, and also staples have massive exposure uh, to the dollar, uh, to international issues. Um, and they're very, very sensitive to a stronger dollar. So. I think healthcare, you have less of that sensitivity and you have reasonable valuations. It's not a great story, um, but I think it's the best one you can tell on the defensives. So what about that? When I think of defensives, I think about things like consumer staples or utilities and things like that. Are and those good buys right now? I think the consumer staples are not a great place to hide, uh, especially if you believe the market is in a, you know, in a bottoming process. Uh, they, they are going to suffer from the currency hit. They still have a stretched consumer, uh, packaging costs. So we also prefer healthcare. Um, the thing about healthcare is that it's now the second largest sector of the S&P 500, not financials, not industrials, certainly not energy or materials. So the S&P is global, the S&P is digital, tech businesses, and the S&P is medical. Now the global parts and the foreign currency exposure aren't helping right now, and there's a little bit of valuation risk still at some of the big digital names, but the medical part has on-demanding valuations, and we are quite excited about some of the innovation that we're seeing coming from the biotech and the, and the, and the, and the pharmaceutical companies, the medicine makers. You mentioned digital and tech. There yeah. are some people, as you know, David, who say you want to go into tech right now because it comes out of a recession first. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it is a bit of an early cyclical, uh, and so are consumer discretionary stocks, but every cycle is different. And I think there are a few things that we have to be mindful of. I think this is going to be, the consumer will be resilient, but a lot of consumer business models uh, might not be able to expand the way they have been over the past 10, 20 years of low inflation, low interest rates. Uh, we're trying to find which businesses have that long-term growth potential through innovation and through solving the problems that are causing us to have weak productivity. One thing is we expect jobs to hold up, but a small recession. But if you're adding jobs and the economy is not growing much, that means productivity is really weak. That's what we need companies to address that 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 problem. Which, Laurie, I think takes us back to something David said earlier, which is it depends on what you think the, the comeback, because sooner or right. later there will be a rebound. What does it look like? Right. Is it a V or is it more gradual? Because that will affect which one is the better place to be. Right. I think if you're thinking about rebound plays, I think you do want to look to some of these beaten up growth areas. I think you want to be very selective. I think you want to stick with quality. I think you want to stick with bigger market caps. But technology is an area that we think looks really, really interesting with reasonable valuations. Um, areas like semiconductors look to me like they've bottomed out in terms of earning sentiment. Basically, nobody is taking numbers up there right now. And that's usually a good contrarian buy signal for that part of the market. But, you know, Going back to kind of what does this recovery look like, if you think it's going to be a hot economy, you want to buy value stocks, you want to buy cyclicals. But if you think it's going to be a cool economy, you do want to buy secular growth-oriented areas of the market. They typically outperform when GDP is below 2%. And I think that is probably the kind of recovery we're headed for. What about small caps? How do you feel about them? Um, you're asking me to talk about my first professional child. Um, <laughs> so I spent a long time covering this space. Um, and I think people who have covered this space for quite some time realize that in the middle of recessions, in the the middle of these very challenging periods economically, this is when you do want to buy them. And if you look at small caps, they've been in a trading range versus large all year. There's some stability in the performance. They're mostly domestic. They're very cheap on valuation, basically at the bottom of their of their historical range. And small caps are already pricing in a collapse in ISM manufacturing to typical troughs and a big spike in jobless claims from here. So I think the recession is largely baked in. And this is where you typically want to be on the rebound. And people want domestic U.S. exposure right now. So. Well, what about that issue of domestic U.S. exposure? Do you want to hide in America? You want to hide in America for now. Yeah. Um, and, and we are looking for businesses that, uh, like Lori said, the ones that will have a strong rebound. We want to be a little bit careful on small caps and semiconductors for a little longer. But those are ones that will likely have V-shaped price recoveries once we get past this. Um, the cousin of technology is communications. And that's been uh, beaten up very badly this year. We think that's overdone, so banks and communications, entertainment companies, internet companies, we think that's an area where investors can start um, uh, stepping up and, and, and buying where the reward should be worth the risks. 
Well, I know you've been going around the country talking to people. What are yeah. you hearing in terms of what they're interested in? What are they nervous about when it comes to investment? So it's funny. I mean, nobody feels particularly bullish right now. Mm. Um, but I think there is a general recognition that people have plenty of defense in their portfolio, plenty of safety trades. And so they are concerned about when does the market bottom? What do I need to co own coming out on the other side? Because I think there is a general recognition that when, rebound, when the rebound finally does happen, they're underexposed to the kinds of things that do well in those rebounds. Do you hear from people, I don't want to be an equity no matter what they are. This is not the time to be in equities. I don't hear that. I mean, to be honest, you know, as I've talked to some of my more bearish kind of global multi-cap, multi-asset investors, um, I can usually talk them into looking into small caps right now. Um, so I think kind of the desire to kind of put everything in cash, it's just not something that's in the DNA of a lot of these people. But I do think even the most bearish investors out there are trying to figure out what has been de-risked and if there's an opportunity to put money to work in here. And ultimately, that is very healthy. David, what about bonds? Is it time to go back into bonds? Well, I think it's more of a 2023 uh, environment to go into bonds right now, you know, very short duration cash and trying to find the equities where the upside is worth taking the risks and the pain and the volatility you'll likely to go through the next few months. I, I think this week frayed nerves, though. A lot of people were fairly calm up until this week and, and even today didn't end very well. Um, so we, we still want to be a bit cautious. We are acting on this dip. We are buying it, but uh, we're also keeping dry powder. Uh, with cash, and um, it, it, it's probably best to just keep in mind that this will be a market that I think has a rally during the holidays on the idea that the Fed is done hiking. They won't cut anytime soon, but they'll be done hiking probably at the end of the year. That probably gives us a rally, but I think we find ourselves at these levels once again early next year in the spring. Lori, we've talked about the strength of the dollar, which has been a real phenomenon, right? Uh, how does an investor take that into account? What does that tell me in my portfolio? It's a tricky issue because typically when the dollar is strengthening, it's a bad environment for equities. So you tend to see the market go down. But at the same time, we do usually see U.S. equities outperform non-U.S. equities. So I think you can still look to the U.S. as a safe haven. And I think, frankly, it's just all about the positioning. So you want to be more wary of areas like industrials, materials, consumer staples, which have that big dollar exposure, and look at areas like financials, and you know, which have less of it, frankly. David, aren't a lot of people going to cash or cash equivalents? Yeah, and um, and Is that I. That's sensible. Well, it would be good if you've done it you know, weeks and months ago <laughs> and begin to deploy some of it. But keeping some cushion, that way you keep your confidence. Uh, should things get worse and more turbulent. Um, cash is not trash, but if you hold on to it for too long, it begins to rot. Uh, so we, we are deploying some of it, but we are still you know, braced for what should we think will be turbulent times. What do you think about cash, Lori? Uh, well, I'm an equity yeah, strategist, so, so I'm always going to want you. All the time. I, I, I think there are opportunities and things to do if you have a longer-term time horizon. So, you know, when we look through the Russell 2000, for example, we can find about 18 different industry groups out of 60 some odd that look like they're washed out in terms of earnings sentiment. We can find about a dozen um, in the big cap space. So, I think there are things to do, but I do think you have to have a strong stomach. And I, I, I am mindful of the fact that when these bottoms happen, they tend to be very quick. No one ever pegs the bottom. So, I think kind of moving in slowly and buying things that make sense longer term is what I'd be doing here as opposed to hiding in cash. One last one, David. What about liquidity? Do you want to be liquid right now? Do you want to, whatever investment you make, whatever it is, make sure you can get out of it pretty quickly? Well, there's nothing more liquid than, than cash. Yeah. Uh, and, and treasuries are, of course, the world's most liquid uh, security. And that's part of the reason why you see the dollar so strong right now for a lot of reasons. Things are more difficult elsewhere. The, the Fed's raising interest rates and it's the world's most liquid security. Um, so yes, I, you know, I think what, you, what you're yeah. seeing is that people want to have uh, that cushion and that liquidity, yeah. but they'll be looking for opportunities to deploy it you know, in the coming months.